Earl Spence Jr. is the best of all the American Olympians to turn professional after the last Olympic Games. This will be in the welterweight division as Earl Spence gets it on with a veteran by the name of Peter Olush. Earl Spence Jr. Is, uh, has done everything that could be asked of. He's undefeated in the 10 fights that he's had. Here is a look at him. He's knocked out eight opponents along the way. But this is a guy, Paulie, that's really all business. This guy, I like this guy, and I like the way he's come along. Yeah, all business. Uh, and uh, like you said, he's been very impressive th thus far in his professional boxing career. You know, you hear good things about Spence. Uh, when you watch him, you can see good things. You hear good things about his training habits. You hear good things about the way he looks in sparring and the things he does in the gym. So, you know, uh, he's definitely been one to watch. He may be the one to watch out of that uh, list of Olympians from 2012. And, and significantly, I think, getting better. Almost every time you see him, he gets better. He adds a little something new. He really goes to school on his fight previously. And uh, we'll see what he can do tonight as he fights a, a, a guy, a veteran guy, even though he's only had 18 fights. He's been fighting for a long time. Peter Oluch, he's 12 and 6 in his career with six knockouts. A lot of those fights, however, have come in his native Kenya. He really hasn't fought anybody the caliber of Earl Spence. And, and quite frankly, he was a man of very few words when we spoke with him. Yeah, it might have been the most few words I've ever seen in a fighter meeting. <laughs> or, the, but or the fewest few words. Yeah, <laughs> the, the fewest, exactly. You know, uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see if he's all business and uh, if he's a man of few words but many punches or... Uh, or if it's something otherwise, I mean, you'd hope to see him test uh, Spence a little bit more tonight, but we'll, we'll see. Well, we will see. Five of his words were, my eyes are on him. Now I've used up half my notes. How do you like that? <laughs> Here's the tail of the tape. We said Peter Alucci, even though he's only had 18 fights, he's 35 years of age. Uh, fought a lot of his fights in Africa, took long layoffs three different times. Uh, other than uh, the age difference, there's really not a big difference in these two guys. Alucci. Uh, although he is a li an inch shorter, uh, has a one-inch reach advantage, but I don't think that's going to be any kind of a factor at all. Let's meet him now, officially, as we take him to the center of the ring once more, and Joe Martinez. Joe! And now, fight fans, here we go. Eight rounds of boxing this scheduled in the welterweight division. Presented by Golden Boy Promotions with Leja Bata Promotions and sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Más Fina, and O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. The three judges scoring this bout at ringside on the 10-point must system, Joel Elizondo, Ellis Johnson, and Ursulo Perez. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Rafael Ramos. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white trunks, trimmed in black, he weighed officially 146 and three-quarter pounds. A veteran of 20 professional fights, he brings 12 victories, six defeats, two draws, and six wins coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Nairobi, Kenya, here is Mr. Ogembo, Peter. And next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing silver trimmed in blue and white, he weighed in 147 pounds. His record stands perfect. Ten victories, no defeats, with eight wins coming by way of knockout. A 2012 U.S. Olympian. Here is the undefeating rising star of DeSoto, Texas, the true era Spade. Okay, guys, you received a three fine instruction. Protect yourself and obey my command. Remember, no one more professional than I. Let's do it. So, Rafael Ramos, the final instructions to the fighters, and uh, Earl Spence back to the blue corner, and Peter Oluch back to the red corner, and we're just about set to go. Earl Spence rocking the Dallas Cowboys trunks. Well, he is from Dallas. I'm I guess that explains I'm not it. A, not a fan, though. I'm a Giants fan, so. <laughs> I can't say I'm fond of the trunks. I'm sure you're not. Alouche, on the other hand, quite honestly, we don't know what to expect from him. He's had three fights here in the United States. All his other fights have been in his native Kenya or somewhere in Africa. Most of them in Kenya. Fight, fought one fight in Namibia. Well, 
traveler, at this, you'd have to say at this point. Yeah, his two fights in the United States, two of his fights, one was in Seattle, Tacoma, Washington, and the other one was uh, in, in West Virginia. So he's uh, seen all the garden spots of America, too. <laughs> Nice and calm. He's trying to get the timing down on the Looch. Looch, a bit of a herky jerky style. So it, may, it may take Spence a round or so to really hone in on him. Good right hand by Spence, and I think that hurt a Looch. Yeah. I mean, once he got in that punching range, Spence didn't waste time letting the heavy fire go. Luch trying to move to his left, keeping his, trying to keep his foot on the outside of Spence so that Spence can't set up the left hand, but he's going to have to be a bit more accurate with his offense because just the moving will eventually not work. Spence will eventually find that distance and, and get his hands off as he did a few seconds ago. And Spence has uh, been working on that exact thing. He does a lot of work on footwork, on balance. That's what I like about him. He just seems to, every fight, he kind of brings something else into the fight that he wants to work on. And, so far, it's all worked out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's technically very sound, good skills, and can punch. It's, there's not much to not like about Spence. You I see like him now using that right hook to end his combinations, and then what that'll do, that will force Aloch to move the opposite way and towards Spence's left hand. Left hand, another left hand, and gets Aloch going backward. This is where Alouche does not want to be. He's going to say that. He does not want to be there. This will allow Spence to kind of tee off. And yet he goes right back in there. I like that Spence takes his time. Even when he, set, he, when he traps his man, he's not rushing in. Make sure he keeps that proper punching distance so that he can get that snap off. And you can hear those punches thudding when he does hit the body of Alouche. Very effective first round, I thought, for Earl Spence Jr. against the Kenyan Alouche. We welcome you back. We come to round two. Very effective first round for Earl Spence Jr. And Luce comes out fighting in the second round. Yeah, he figured if he didn't start getting his hands moving, it would just be one-way traffic for Earl Spence. So he's got to give Spence something to think about. Oh, good left hand by Spence. Drove the loose into the corner. Another left hand by Spence. And the loose right hand gets Spence out of there, but only for a second. Luch took it well, though. Spence landed that, that left hand pretty solidly. Of course, too many of those, he won't take them well anymore. So he's going to have to set something up and get something going here. Tonight's CompuBox stats brought to you by ThrowDownFantasy.com. Draft fighters, track stats, and win. And you can see the numbers in the first round. Spence landing 29 of 76. Dulouche has only seven punches connected. He threw 44. More of same here in round two. So Dulouche is getting to the point where he doesn't know where to go. Protect himself. Spence is now cutting the distance a bit faster, a bit quicker. Yeah. And he's not missing very many of those shots. No, he's not. Very effective. Alouche with the right hand. And give Alouche credit, though. He's cornered. He knows he has nothing left to do but fight, and he does try to fight. Ducked right into that left hand from Spence. a little bit low. Spence just sized him up and then threw it. was a here it comes left hand. He's trying to vary where the offense is coming from. Sometimes throwing the left hand straight and sometimes throwing it around. That way you take away the, uh, the ability for the opponent to anticipate where the shots are coming from. The 
Roosh tightening things up a little bit defensively, but Spence intelligently going to the body. Spence just doesn't waste a lot of punches. He's effective with the punches he throws. Good little counter by Luch. He's thinking, and there he goes again. Coming to the end of the second round, and uh, Alouche again doing enough, I believe, to win both first two rounds here. We've got a lot more to talk about from here in San Antonio. And some action from the last round. Spence coming behind that double jab. We discussed this in the Gachet fight, setting up the distance behind the jab, that you can maximize your leverage on the power shot, and that's what Gachet did with that double jab and then let go of the left hand, and they will land it solidly. So this is round three of this eight-round fight. Earl Spence, Paul Alouche. Defen defensive fighter also takes a lot of punches on his elbows, on his shoulders. Yeah, yeah. And even a luch, you know, he's not stupid defensively. I mean, he, when he's been hit, it's because Spence has set him up nicely. But a luch also rolls in a bit of a herky jerky style in his own right. It's keeping Spence thinking a little bit. I mean, Spence is the busier fighter and he's winning these rounds, but he's got to think his way through this. Yeah, so which makes it a good fight for him. Yeah. These are the kind of fights that make you learn. Force you to be patient at times. You can't just rush in with your work with a guy like Alouz. But you like to see that Spence remains composed nonetheless. Yeah, many people feel that of the Olympic class that he probably has A, the fastest track to a championship, and B, probably the best shot at a championship. Which turned lefty there for a second, he's back to right handed. Trains in Texas, in DeSoto, Texas, the suburb of Dallas. Said he's got a lot of friends who made the four hour drive up here to San Antonio. Good job to get him turned that time. Hey, Luch is lively in there, man. He's not making it easy for Spence. He's not busy enough to win these rounds, but I tell you, he's tough to hit clean. Yeah. And as I say that, he does get hit clean. But <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Spence has to think his way through this. Yeah, Luch kind of tries to set traps for Spence. You can see him kind of going backward here. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes he'll kind of use that roll right hand or catch and shoot. Spence not getting busier inside. That's one way to eliminate the catch and shoot. You stay busy. He's still going backwards, although I'm not sure this is a tactic. There's a right hand drives him into the ropes. So another very good round for Earl Spence Jr. At a and W, our beef is... We welcome you back. This is round four of this eight-round fight. Earl Spence and Peter Olush. Just sitting here trying to think of the great fighters who have come out of Kenya, and there are not a lot of them. Not a lot of them, no. I'll tell you, Olush is crafty. <laughs> he may not be a great fighter, but he's crafty. hard to hit with a combination. I mean, anytime Spence does land something solid, it's, it's one at a time because this guy is so herky-jerky and sometimes you can't time where he's going or which way he's going to bend and weave. Spence doing a really good job of staying in front of him, though, whatever he does. Yeah, and, and not getting wild because, you know, the tendency can be you want to get crazy with a guy like this. And he, and as he doesn't stay wild, he's able to land those solid shots here and there because he keeps his composure. That was a pretty good shot right there, and now it's got Alouche going backward. Now Alouche is in trouble, and an uppercut 
forces him to hold on and he do, takes a knee and now let's see if they'll call that a knockdown. I think Rafael Ramos is and rightly so. That's the thing, when you can punch like Spence, you don't need to land too many combinations. Sometimes a one solid shot will do it and you can get your guy railing and follow up. That's what Spence did there. And he comes right to Alouche this time. Four shots in the head and the back solution to a corner again. And there was a great left hand. And it put Arush right on his back and Rafael Ramos gonna wave it off. It is over. I'll tell you what, that was an impressive performance. Impressive, and Alusha's game. Alusha's game, and you know, he, he gave it his, his all, and he, he forced Spence to think, and Spence thought his way through it, and got the KO, that, which makes it all the more impressive. Absolutely, here's another look at it. And, uh, you know, you like the way he set it up, and you like the way he finished it. That was a very impressive performance. For a young guy who I know we're gonna see a lot of, and he's, I don't wanna say he's gonna be fast-tracked to a title shot, but he'll be on a faster track than a lot of his peers. Yeah, he, with performances like this, you know, uh, Aluch may not be a known commodity or a known name, but he was a guy who forced Spence to have to think his way through and remain calm and composed, and that's what Spence did. We talked to Aluch about, uh, is this the last of Raw? If he does well, he'll go on. If he doesn't, he won't, and uh, looks like the real world beckons for Olush, but for this guy, all out in front of him. We're gonna get a chance to look at the first knockdown and then the final one. It was started with that solid left hand by Spence that had got Olush reeling, and this is the follow-up. Spence stayed on him. Again, like we said, didn't get too crazy, didn't, didn't lose his composure, and it caused the knockdown eventually. And here's the end of the fight, right after Olush got up from that count, sharp inside left hand and that was it the referee had seen enough there well stopped i thought by rafael ramos very good referee and the victory goes to earl spence his ninth knockout and his 11 wins notice how short that left hand was it was all because spence remained composed throughout the fight technique matters a lot you know what i really i like his balance you know for a young guy he's always seems to be on balance even if he's chasing he still when he throws his punches manages to get himself on balance i he's a guy that i think has a very very bright future earl spence jr he is now 11 and 0 with nine knockouts and a well-deserved smile this is the guy you're definitely going to be see more see more of on golden boy and uh who knows but that a championship might not be more than a year away. That is something we talked to him about. And he said, oh, maybe the start of next year I might be ready for that. He wants to stay busy again this year. He fought eight times last year. He fought seven. He wants to fight seven times this year. So in the meantime, he is a winner. He runs his record to 11 and 0. We are in San Antonio. Our main event of the evening still to come. So don't go anywhere. That's Junior so far the star of the night let's take a look at the final numbers tonight's copy box stats brought to you by throwdownfantasy.com draft fighters track stats and win and here are the final numbers in no contest 115 punches landed out of 337 thrown Olush only landed 26 punches in the fight it was a dominant performance by earl spence and it was ended in dramatic fashion so for Olush, he came into the ring a confident guy he left maybe not so confident yeah you know and spence did what he's supposed to do you know he remained composed and it's not as it's easier said than done with a guy like Olush, who's got that herky-jerky style like i said and can be a little awkward at times but spence showed the category of prospect that he is the level of the, the pedigree that he has he remained composed set his man up and finally when he did see the opportunity he pounced and got him out of there. Maloch was very crafty, but in the end, you saw the one-punch knockout that followed the knockdown originally. So an impressive performance. There's no question about it. And we take you once more to the center of the ring for the official announcement. Here again is Joe Martinez. Joe? Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes officially. One minute, 39 seconds. Round number four, your winner by KO victory. And still the undefeated true. So there he is, Earl Spence Jr., 11-0 with nine knockouts and takes another step on the road for 
a hope for title shot and uh, he did nothing to uh, discourage people who believe in him.